getting diagnosed with ADHD had only given me this, I'd be satisfied, right? That talks about an interest-based nervous system. If you haven't heard of this, listen up. If you have, listen to it again and soak up the joy. So my current YouTube tactic on video creation is just to wait until I have a spark of motivation to create said video and today I did not have the motivation but then I had a life realisation about motivation which coincidentally gave me the motivation to create this video about motivation so... <laughs> I did some journaling about it, which gave me all these thoughts and ideas and things that I want to share. And then I put a little structure to it because I want to create a bit of structure for this video because there's quite a few different pieces. Um, but what I want to essentially talk about is the motivational quest that I have been on throughout my life to solve the motivational problem that I have always had. Um, and then I'm going to talk about what leads my motivation to completely fall apart. Uh, the most amazing thing that I saw post ADHD diagnosis that explained motivation in ADHD that has just like changed everything for me and then I will tell you what are the actual things that I do and that have worked for me that enable me to motivate myself enough to exercise and I'm going to specifically focus on exercise because it's one of the ones for me that I know it's super good for me and I know it will make me feel good but I really 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 struggle to get myself to do it and I've had varying degrees of success with it over the years so it, this will apply to like various different aspects of motivating yourself but I'm going to use the example of exercise. I'm actually going to lose my mind because I put a proper morning routine and structure in my place in, in place on Monday to make sure all of my devices were charged. I don't know what's happened but my camera is about to run out of battery. I might actually just use this as motivation for me to get this done super quickly. Bish bash bash. Okay so motivation and exercise. And exercise is a really mixed one for me like I have had some success. Um, however you want to determine that or you know I've got into some good routines with exercise but it's always been something that I have found so impossible and I've constantly tried to like shame myself into using loads of different things to get myself just to do the stuff. Me and my sister used to say something to each other that now I've had my diagnosis I think just makes so much sense which is I wish that I could bottle the feeling that you get after exercise and then in the moment when I come around to exercise again and I really don't want to do it I can just get that out of the bottle and remind myself how good it is going to be because it's so impossible in that moment to like foresee the fact that it's going to be worth it once you have finished. So let's go through some of the things that I've tried to motivate myself to exercise. Something that underpins all of this for me is I did a psych degree so I used to be really interested in reading about research and there's a book called Willpower which talks about the really famous marshmallow test which is an experiment where children or toddlers are given the option to choose long-term gratification over a short-term reward so it basically measures their ability to manage their own behaviour and self-regulate and it's something like if they don't eat the marshmallow right now they'll get two marshmallows in 10 minutes for example. And I remember reading that and just thinking, oh no, because all of the research is, is about how people that don't have self-regulation like that and have good willpower have like worse life outcomes. And I remember reading it and being like, oh, I, I don't have any willpower. Like this is not good for me. I need to learn how to have willpower. I need to learn how to regulate myself. And so everything that I tried when it came to motivation was coming from that lens of like, there is something fundamentally not right here that I need to fix. And here are some of the strategies that I've tried. I've tried sleeping in workout gear to encourage that path of least resistance so I will wake up in the morning and I will go for a run. Didn't. I actually got out of bed, took off the workout gear and then went back to sleep. Um, similar along those lines of path of least resistance, packing your bag and getting it all sorted beforehand. Fundamentally, if I wake up and I don't want to go, doesn't make a difference. Um, I <laughs> signed up to a website that donated your money to a charity of a cause that you did not agree with if you didn't fulfill that goal um, as a way to kind of like almost opposite incentivize you so incentivize you to do it so something bad didn't happen didn't work because you can just go in and switch it off or say that you did the goal when you didn't do the goal didn't make a difference um, I've tried switching up the times of my workout so trying in the morning versus lunchtime versus the afternoon or evening sometimes with varied success but fundamentally didn't really impact my ability to be motivated to do it signed up to a gym hoping the accountability of paying so much a month would help didn't make a difference going with a friend sometimes works but a lot of my friends tend to be similar to me and if you're both not going to hold each other to account doesn't really help what else have I tried oh anything that's to do with reward or incentive so like if I go to the gym, I will be able to buy myself something new or have a treat. Doesn't work. I'm going to buy the thing anyway, whether I do it or not. So there's there's just nothing that would like incentivize that behavior. 
general sort of undercurrent of shame. Uh, what is wrong with you? Why can't you do it? Just go do the exercise. Why is it this hard? <laughs> doesn't feel good, doesn't really help. Listing all the benefits of why I should do it. So like, if I go for a run tomorrow, I will feel X, Y, Z. These are the benefits that I will have. Like in that moment, it helps me remember why it's a good idea. But when the moment exercise comes around, if I don't want to do it, still not going to do it. Asking someone to hold me to account. So like a partner or someone that I live with say, I'm going to go for a run in the morning. Can you make sure that I get up and that I go? <sighs> this is a tricky one because actually if I wake up and they want to hold me to account, I'll just, <laughs> I'm like, why? No, I hate you with every fibre of my being. And I know that that is unreasonable and they're just being helpful, but it just, it doesn't really feel good. Mixed success on that one. Rachel made edit, as you can tell, because the quality on this, not up to par. But I just wanted to add in something that I didn't even think to mention, which is things like signing up to events as a way to motivate yourself. So actually I've done quite a few events exercise wise in my time, a couple of 10Ks, half marathon, a mini like sprint triathlon. Um, which you could easily look at and be like, oh my goodness, she's managed to motivate herself to do those things, but that is false. <laughs> Signing up to the event didn't help me motivate myself to exercise any more frequently. I actually didn't enjoy the process because I was just was constantly like, oh, I've got this event, but I'm still not motivated to exercise. And I kind of just managed to get away with running or doing the exercise because of other things that had encouraged me or kind of doing the bare minimum so I could just get through the event. So yes, for me personally, the dopamine hit of signing up to an event might help me get started, but if there's a long period of time between doing that and then actually doing the event, it doesn't really help incentivize me. If you notice that my position in lying has changed, it's because my battery did run out. Um, my wire's not long enough, so I've had to wait for like half an hour and then move it back. But the good news is that I spent the time responding to your lovely comments on my last YouTube video, so all is not lost. Where was I? I don't know what to do about these lights, but I also just want to live my life, so let's just continue. Okay, so I've talked about some of the things that I tried, many of the things that I tried over my life to just get myself to be motivated, and I just couldn't understand why they just didn't seem to work for me. And over, I don't know, probably last three, four years, I started to realise that actually maybe I should work with myself a little bit more to recognise like what are the things that leads my motivation um, to exercise to fall apart. And that is these things. Number one, the novelty of what I am doing wears off. First time I did a yoga class, I was like, I'm gonna be a yoga instructor. <laughs> to be fair, I did do yoga every week for a year. Um, but that's because many of the other motivational crutches or structures that I needed to do that consistently were in place for me. But yeah, I'll do something for a period of time, think that I wanna build a whole life out of it, and then lose interest. So I had a notification and it distracted me. Novelty wears off, find it really hard to get myself to keep going. But two, no accountability. If I'm the only person that is getting myself to do it, there's nobody else waiting for me, relying on me, motivation for it falls apart. Thirdly, life gets busy, loads of different things to juggle, find it really hard to sustain the routine. So when I said I went to yoga every day, every day, whoa, every week for a year, at the time I was working as a primary school teacher and my routine and my responsibilities were very much like get up, go to work, do my job, go home, watch TV, do more work, feed myself, right? It, like I didn't really have a big social life at the time. I lived with other people, but very much had a lot of my own space. So it was easy to build it into the routine. But once life gets kind of busy and there's loads of different elements, I find it hard to build exercise into that. So one of the ways in which my motivation for exercise falls apart is if I haven't built it into a routine, but here's the kicker, <laughs> which you will find as many of the contradictions of ADHD, is that when I do build it into a structure and a routine, I feel restricted and frustrated and get annoyed with the fact that it's so structured and I want to rebel against it and then I don't keep doing it. Emotional state has the ability to derail my motivation to go and do exercise. So if I'm exercising, say, after work at six o'clock, something's happened at work and it's annoyed me or I'm frustrated in some way and I'm in that zone, I just, I don't want to do it anymore. I'll be like, I'm tired, I want to go home. So I kind of get stuck in that state and I find it hard to switch over and go like, no, this is something that's good for you, go do it. And lastly, something I didn't know at the time when I recognised this, but I now understand is very much waiting mode in ADHD, which is if I've got exercise plan at the end of the day, be preoccupied with the fact that it is coming and I feel like I can't relax until it is there. So often I will cancel evening exercise classes if I don't have meetings or anything else before that because 
I don't feel like I can concentrate on anything else until my whole evening is free. That's a whole twisted, frustrating, painful aspect of ADHD. Those are the things that I recognised even before my diagnosis, or even before I considered ADHD for myself, um, derail my motivation. I will now tell you the one thing that just changed everything for me, and then I'm going to talk about the things that I've had that have given me mixed success, and the things that have given me absolute success when it comes to motivating myself to exercise. So I'm going to get my laptop and read this out to you. I feel very official like this, with my blazer on. If there's one thing that this diagnosis has given me that has been more impactful than anything, more in fact, <laughs> more impactful than medication, than like awareness and acceptance of anything else, if, if getting diagnosed with ADHD had only given me this, I'd be satisfied, right? And it is an attitude article by Dr. Blah, 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 William Dodson that talks about an interest based nervous system. If you haven't heard of this, Listen up! If you have, listen to it again and soak up the joy. I'll also put a link to it in the description of this video. And this is the description. It says, People with ADHD have an interest-based nervous system. Clinicians will often ask, can you pay attention? And the answer is typically, sometimes. That is the wrong question. Instead, practitioners should ask, have you ever been able to get engaged in an activity and stay engaged? Then, once you are engaged, have you ever found anything that you couldn't do? Anyone with ADHD will answer along these lines. I have always been able to do anything I wanted so long as I could get engaged through interest, challenge, novelty, urgency, passion, or a do or die deadline. I have never been able to tap into the three things that organize and motivate everybody else. Importance, rewards, and consequences. Oh, sorry, so dramatic. It makes me emotional because I have never ever being able to get motivated through importance, rewards and consequences. And so many of the examples of, that I've given you on this complete, intense, relentless quest to solve my motivation issue have been around those three things and they were never going to work. Any motivational strategies or tactics or things that we put in place for ourselves, they are not going to work unless they build upon and support the fact that our nervous system is interest based. How do I do that? The million dollar question that I'm still trying to figure out. A few things that I've tried with mixed success. So pre-diagnosis, I read this book, Willpower Doesn't Work, and I was excited and validated by it, given what I described earlier about beating myself over the head with that other Willpower Marshmallow book about yeah, willpower, be better at willpower. Um, this is a great book because it gives loads of ideas and strategies and ways that you can create an environment that increases the likelihood that you can exercise any kind of willpower or just creates the conditions that will help you be successful. For me, works to some extent. However, combine the willpower, interest-based nervous system aspects with ADHD with the fact that setting up routines and environments and structures for ourselves is quite difficult. The problem with this book is that it can take a degree of willpower to set up your environment to scaffold you and then it requires maintenance of that and that can be a bit of a challenge so that's why I say this one was mixed success for me. Something else that I tried was to just completely change the expectation of myself so stop putting such high and ridiculous and overwhelming expectations about the frequency of exercise or whatever it is that you want from yourself. This has worked really well for me so I used to think that I had seasonal affective disorder because between the months of October to December I get really down, I struggle to motivate myself more than usual, you know, that kind of winter blues feeling. But at some point I looked at that and I said, I'm so tired of feeling bad about the things that I just fail to do, I'm just going to expect zero from myself. So I'd go into the winter months and have zero expectation that I would exercise and I did not get depressed in the winter anymore. Because the problem wasn't necessarily getting depressed in the winter months. Yes, like lots of people, I think how human beings are wired, we don't always have the same amount of energy in the winter months, but because I wasn't adjusting that expectation, the way that I then was treating myself and talking to myself was just making me really down in the winter. So I removed the expectation and I felt a lot better. Could say it was a success. However, the problem with removing the expectation is then I didn't do any exercise and I, I am 
in a zone right now, especially post pandemic, because the pandemic just completely normalized not leaving the house. I'm still struggling to break out of that, even though it's absolutely what I need. Um, I have no idea what I was saying. <laughs> Poof, that I've had this record since recording, starting recording this video, which is quite a win actually. What the hell, like apps completely gone. Oh damn. Now I'm so in my head about it, I can't even try and retrace my steps. Okay, we were talking about willpower, I was talking about expectations, I was talking about not exercising, I was talking about the pandemic, I was talking about not being able to leave the house, getting out of that routine. I know this is going to be painful for you because you know, but I don't know. <laughs> but I'm taking you on this journey with me. <laughs> leaving the house. Oh, yes. When you don't have an expectation, you then don't try, and then you don't exercise at all, and I need exercise. So, like, having no expectation doesn't really... It helped me for my mental health at that point, but now we need some expectation, because I know that exercise helps me be a healthy and happy person. We got it. Huzzah, huzzah, chee chee. Three more things. The next one that helped motivate myself to exercise and do other things like routines is giving myself an immediate reward. So a long-term abstract like, oh, maybe you can have a, maybe you can eat something or you're not allowed to eat the thing or enjoy the thing until you've exercised doesn't work. You know what does work? A sticker chart. That's right, I am a child and I am here for it. Um, I've been able to motivate myself to exercise by giving myself like a little sticker on a chart. By using Lego, I will link to the video here where I talk about how I use Lego to build better habits. It's like there's something about being able to put a physical thing in a physical place to say, hey, I did that thing. The reason it's mixed success is because it worked perfectly for me, for the Lego and for the sticker chart on separate occasions for like three months and then I never looked at it again because the novelty wore, that's, okay, no, that's not true. I did look at it again, but I haven't had as much success from it since the novelty has worn off, but it's in my strategy back pocket to pull out at another time when it feels more novel again. Reframe, reframe, none of this full on negativity. Two more things that have helped me with mixed success. Changing state, so for me, what's actually way more important than scaffolding the environment is changing the state that I'm in right before I expect myself to exercise. I can't think myself into motivation, but I can feel my way into motivation. Really short example of that is like, wake up in the morning, don't wanna exercise, can't be bothered, get up and do five star jumps. It's a smaller like path of least resistance because you're only doing five, but by the time you've got up and done them and you feel good from them, you're changing your physical and emotional state. So now you're like, now your nervous system is like, hey, we're gonna go exercise now. When I say mixed success, is because I 100% know that changing my state is one of the best ways that I can feel ready to exercise. It requires me to remember an action doing the thing that changes the state, so getting up and doing the star jumps. Sometimes I can't even get that far. Mixed results. Finally, medication. So, the video I will link here of the first 30 days when I was on my meds was like, oh my god, changing my life, doing all of the things, so motivated. I was really hoping that they would just solve this exercise issue for me and solve the motivational issue for me. They have not. They have not. That's okay. I've heard this is how they work. I put medication in the mixed success category, and by the way, I'm on 36 milligrams of Concerta XL, because they do help with some things. So they make it more likely that I will create the structures and environments and routines that will help me to exercise. So they help me do that bit. Once I am motivated, they help me to sustain my motivation, but they don't help me to get motivated for something that I don't really want to do. Like there needs to be something that sparks that like, yeah, you want to go do this? Then the meds kind of help scaffold that, but they don't help me want to go and do exercise. That's not true. They don't help me go and do exercise if there's something else that I would rather be doing. Finally, the grand finale of things that help motivate me to exercise, the only one thing that has ever got me doing exercise on a regular basis is paying a personal trainer a lot of money to come and see me. Well, it was actually in the pandemic, so it was over Zoom, but to have a weekly appointment with me where I turn up, I pay them, we work one-on-one. -on -one. The only thing that's ever really worked, but not sustainable because you gotta pay for it. However, if I could build that into my life every week, every day, I would do it. And I know that that's the only perfect solution for me. And even though I can't do it all of the time, I think that says I think that says something because it's encouraged me to stop trying to look for solutions that don't work for me when I have one that would work if I could afford to do it more. And 
you just got to accept the reality that isn't going to work, but what does that teach you about the ways in which you can get motivated? What I am hoping that you take away from this video is total and complete and holy permission to not use strategies to motivate yourself that were not built for neurodivergent brains. It is like banging your head against a wall. And I'm grateful in many respects that I didn't get diagnosed till later because it means that I went on this relentless quest to figure it out and work it out. So by the time I got diagnosed, I kind of already knew a lot of that stuff. It's just that now I'm still working on accepting and finding new strategies and ways that can help me. So if you have any ideas in the comments about what motivates you, what you think might help, share them with each other. Where I'm at right now with exercise is I've started kickboxing. Um, that is my one weekly commitment because I have a class that I go to that I paid for and at the moment it's novel, I'm enjoying it, I'm feeling good after it. The meds, oh one last thing I didn't mention, the other way that meds help is that they completely um, sort out the waiting mode thing for me so I, I don't, so I don't cancel things ahead of time because I'm preoccupied like I just I can wait to the evening to do stuff. Uh, we'll see how we get on with that. I really want to do it daily, like, or as much as possible because I, f I exercise for me and I think is a pretty proven thing with ADHD is like one of the single most best things that you can do for your mental health and for your ADHD symptoms. It's a journey. It's a never ending train of stuff. But you know what a lot of us ADHD is a good for? Relentless determination. So let's apply that to this situation, but do it with compassion and kindness and strategies that work for your brain rather than those that just do not. See you next week. If you haven't subscribed already, please do like the video, leave me a comment. Love to all.